Welcome to The Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. With your hosts, Dan Green and Eric Stewart. Welcome back to The Heart of the Cards, and I am joined by Eric Stewart. We were talking about the call to adventure on the hero's journey. What motivates you to do something with your life? And you have certain plans, things that you want to achieve, and sometimes they don't work out. You know, uh, uh, failure is a part of every success. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We make plans, right. but we can't control everything. Right. You can do what you do and work hard doing it, but there are other things that come into play, and you and you just have to bend and you know with the wind and figure out how you fit in, and where you end up is okay. Right. Like. My thing is, you know, that the whole mantra of do what you love, love what you do. The day that the things that I do become a chore, I'm not going to do them anymore. Yep. When music becomes unfun and becomes a chore, I won't do it anymore. Voiceovers are work, but I love them. Oh, for sure. Even when I'm doing stuff that's just dry and painful copy, it doesn't matter. It's a challenge. All right. You want to give me something that has no life? I'm going to bring life to it. Right. And sometimes they want something that's somewhere between a warmed up corpse and a freshly (laughs) dead person. But even that is a challenge. That takes skill. That's right. Oh, you know that read on my demo reel. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) It's, you know, it's that it's that beige voiceover that happens on every pharmaceutical ad. If you've been dead for more than 24 hours, you know, um, (laughs) or whatever it may be. Call a doctor. But uh, there's something also to be observed that when you are performing in Australia, um, you can do your thing with just you. You can do it yourself. Yes. You found a way to hold on to your art in a way that you can practically apply to the life that you're living, right? Yeah. Well, I think the individual side of, of that, I mean, it's it's a double-edged sword for me, but I do feel like I I need people to do certain things when I need that for what I'm working on. But I also feel at just the way that I've been brought up and the work that I put into it, I feel very comfortable saying I can do what I do alone. Right. And it comes down to that sometimes. It comes down to relying on myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, do I think I'm always good at it? No. But my goal is to be better than the last time I did it. Right, right. But yes, I have gotten to the point where I feel that it is something that I can accomplish as a one-man show of life. Mm-hmm. But I do want people around. I like to share creativity. I like the experience of it. You can always learn from other people that you're working with creatively. And, and I think that that is the magic of what we do. But you also have to remember that the, the, the main person you rely on on this journey is really you. For sure. And I think for some people who are considering making the jump, there's an attachment to the world that you know. And part of that is the you that you believe yourself to be. Mm -hmm. It can be scary letting that go or feeling like, you know, you're you're never going to see that again. But another thing I think that you would agree with is that you in this embracing something that's bigger than you, this call to adventure, you end up feeling like you find who you really are. Oh, totally. Right? Or you resonate with your experience on a more profound level. Lots of people say, uh, I'll bring in another Joseph Campbell quote, that uh, I swear I have thoughts of my own. I'm just bringing in a lot of his. But um, No, no, <laughs> I, I like the references. They're very good. <laughs> that uh, there's this idea that people are looking for, the, for a, what is the meaning of life. And he reflects that it's really more about having a meaningful experience of the life that you have. It's the same issue from a different angle. And when you're participating with yourself in your life on levels that really matter to you, yeah, that's when you find out what you really respond to and and what really motivates you, gives you resilience, because you will encounter failure. You won't be satisfied with your skill level or the circumstances or what have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you really need to find those things that resonate that can keep you going. And the honesty of your art, especially from the place of being a songwriter, you know, I was writing this morning, and usually that's when I, I usually do my best songwriting early in the morning before my coffee mm-hmm. or late at night when the world is quiet. Yep. And I'm writing a song, and it's a, a sweeter sort of uh, love song. And, you know, I get emotional when I'm writing. And I say, wow, okay, um, sure. here I am 
expressing how I feel, and then I'm imagining someone listening to it and enjoying it themselves and maybe being moved by it because it comes from a place of honesty. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you try to chase after what the trends are of the day, you're never going to keep up. Right. (laughs) You basically have to say, I'm going to do me and express me. And then if it works, great. If not, it's still truly honest. And Mm -hmm. we are told too many times the, the mold we have to fit into and, oh, you should be doing this. So many great pieces of advice out there. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's about saying, well, you know what? If you don't like it, that's okay, whatever I do. Right, right. But you will never say it's fake. And you will never say it's it's a put on or what's he trying to do. You might just say it's not my cup of tea, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And that's my goal with anything that I'm working on. I want to make it uniquely me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And that doesn't mean it's better than anyone else. It's just that I want you to recognize I am getting a better sense of who Eric is. And then I, in revisiting these things or creating them, I'm getting a sense of who I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could tell you if I sat down and listened to my, you know, first three or four albums you would know who I was. Mm -hmm. I would know who I was. Mm -hmm. I've matured. I've, you know, I've grown older. I have hopefully learned something um, in the journey, but it's very much of like you're teaching yourself who you are Mm -hmm. when you create, when you draw, when you're getting ideas on a page or when you're writing, Mm -hmm. um, even if it's not necessarily your story, the characters that are come out of you are you. They're part of you. Sure. As long as you come from a place of honesty to me, you should be proud of what you are creating. Yeah. Well, even with, uh, with that last thing you just said, with actors, you're doing roles that many actors have done before, particularly if we're talking about theater. Mm-hmm. But you always have the obligation of making it your own. Sure. Right? And when I am working with students on developing their character voice skills and committed to the goal of getting a demo, I tell them, okay, come in with 10 original characters, meaning things that that, you know, you're not doing imitations of something that's out there. And and so they come back with, you know, to the next session with, you know, these ideas and we build from there. We don't always keep the same crew of characters. We'll switch things up. And I'm sure that their demo has marketable characters on them. That's, you know, obviously the point. But that's a much different process than me saying, okay, here's some marketable characters. Do these voices in this way and say the lines like this. Right? Right. Because they won't learn how to create a character if they do that. And you should always be creating, even if you're using somebody else's words, like you like you say. Yeah, right. Obviously, (laughs) taking a role, like you've said, where it's been played by many other actors and making it your own. To me, that is a challenge that how do you play Othello uh, like differently? Right. But you would have your own take on any number of Springsteen songs. Exactly. And you wouldn't be up there not knowing what to do. You'd be like, you'd be feeling it. Right, right, right. And that's true. I mean, to me, a song is is your script. So you're telling that story. So that is true. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But you're right. It does create this challenge. <laughs> so what am I going to bring to this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, to me, is, is, is such an interesting part of that challenge for the stage actor or the movie actor um, like that. I mean, obviously, with our voiceover characters, I have been known to do hybrids of things. You know, if someone wants something in a certain style of a, of a known character, mm-hmm. I'll still say, like, you know what? I, I, let me add my own thing to it because right. there are people that do impersonations, but they also don't know how to read a script. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> right? right. So, yeah. so let, me, let, let me try to add something to it. So, yeah, that, that's yeah. very interesting. That's very interesting. As an independent production company, Andromeda greatly benefits from the support of its audience. If you're able to contribute as little as a dollar a month, consider going to our Patreon page. Any support you can give means a lot to us creators, and we're excited to bring you more. Visit AndromedaProductions.com and see what's in store. If this is content you enjoy, please like, subscribe, and share on YouTube. I also wanted to um, go back to this. You were you were talking about how people will say, hey, you should consider, you know, this trend or this aesthetic mm-hmm. or whatever. And when I first graduated um, from from Rutgers Mason Crow School of the Arts, um, I that that last year, I felt very clear. I felt very centered and connected to my creative wellspring, if you will. And um, getting out into the industry of acting 
was a bit disorienting because so much of that is people telling you how you should look and what you should be competing right. for and how you should be marketed. And those are relevant things. But that is not really a discussion about creativity. No. Right. That's a discussion about marketing and, and again, relevant, but a different conversation. And, you know, we've been working on Crossing the Gods, which is an idea I had 20 years ago. And um, <laughs> I have other ideas that are like even backlogged before that. But in, in Crossing the Gods has this superhero aesthetic. And, uh, you know, I'm waiting to get the feedback from somebody like, oh, you're just trying to cash in on the superhero trend. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> Pop right. culture has caught up to me and all the other geeks. <laughs> it just happens to be that our geeky little niche stuff is now mainstream. And I, I would be telling these kinds of stories if it weren't popular. You know, this is just the kind of stuff I like. Sure. Well, it's the format. I mean, it's it's the format. You know, if I'm doing something that's like a rock and roll song that's that's obviously influenced by someone like Springsteen or Tom Petty or something sure, like that. Sure. Someone might hear that in the music and go, oh, you're doing this. In life. Well, this is what I grew up with. The sound, this is my palette. This is what I paint with, right? So right. that's why it's going to feel like that. We have both, I'm sure, been told multiple times what we should and shouldn't do. Right. And, right. you know, sometimes we make choices that are maybe not the best if they're career based. But as long as you are following what you feel, I mean, you have to be smart. This business is also about presentation. It's about marketing. And we get that. But there's longevity to me, the artists, the creators who didn't necessarily follow that beaten path right. and still worked very hard, were not completely irresponsible with the business side of what they were doing. But they also said, I'm not going to listen to that because I believe it should be done this way to to stay true to my to my art. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know. Yeah. And just to be clear, there's a big difference between that and not listening to what it really is constructive advice. And like, you know, right, right, right. Don't, don't be righteous when it comes to like getting helpful feedback. No, no. If you can find a, a mentor or a advisor who. We should totally do a show about mentors. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, I'm sure we both have some great examples of those people in our lives. But the idea is those people that you come to for advice should not have any ulterior motive. Right. It's basically paying it forward. Yes. And that's the tricky side. It's very hard to ask someone an opinion and have them just say, I like it, because we all feel compelled to give our two cents because, <laughs> all right, you're asking me, do you like the cake I made for you? And you're like, it's great. That's not enough to justify who I am, right? It's great. I really love the icing. It was just sweet enough. Like we have to give this, or you know what I would have done next time is I would have done a chocolate you know, layer instead of just all vanilla. Because we have to give our two cents, right? Right, right, I'm right. getting hungry right now. But um, <laughs> if you can find someone in your life who is saying to you, here's some creative you know, criticism because I want to see you succeed, you, f you hold on to that person. You make sure that, you know, and, it's, and unfortunately, it's sometimes few and far between. That's true. That's true. But you know who's never too few or too far between? Uh, no. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about our friend, Tips and Tricks, the helpful wizard. Oh, I love him. I wonder what he has to say today. <laughs> I don't know. I hope he remembers. Welcome to Wizardly Words of Wisdom. I am your host, Tips and Tricks. And while I am a mage extraordinaire, I am also a jack of all trades. But a master of nuns? Nuns? What do nuns have to do? Not that I have anything against nuns. I, well, and I am a master of magic, so that doesn't quite... Well, I don't know about that. But I do know a few things about drawing. First, draw from life. Use reference. Whether it's what you see before you, or photographs, or even other drawings... How can you possibly draw something to look like what it looks like if you don't look at it? Second, look for basic shapes. Every object can be broken down to simple, basic forms. For instance, arms and legs are merely cylinders with little bendy parts in between. Cars and buildings, various forms of rectangles usually. And faces are not circles, they're ovals. And finally and thirdly, value and line quality. 
The value are the colors and shading. They create the illusion of depth, and line quality refers to the width or narrowness of a line, which also communicates not only a lovely variety, but a sense of volume and weight. And finally, and thirdly, oh, did we already do three? I keep forgetting. Well, anyway, I'll do one more just because I like you. Practice. Yes, drawing is a skill that anyone can learn. Sure, some may be a little bit more talented to begin with, but if you have determination, you too could become one of the greats. Well, that's all I have for you now, but I'll look forward to the next time I can share some wizardly words of wisdom. That tips and tricks, always good for something, right? I, I guess you could say uh, we were drawing on his expertise. Oh, ow. I'm ow. sorry. I'm a dad. Yeah. I get to make <laughs> dad jokes. <laughs> dad yes. jokes, bad jokes, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, but you know, he, he actually has a point there. Yeah, for sure. In terms of the drawing stuff. You you need to do it, you need to try it, and right. um, if you Failing. don't right. get yes. it that quickly, that's okay too. It's true, but I, I can also say, I, you know, for teaching uh, at Ed Studio for about 10 years, I guess, or maybe it's more, um, there is a real payoff to seeing somebody improve and being a part of their journey doing that, right? Yes. So yes. It's, there, it's not like um, there's this unbelievable myth mentor out there. No, there are people who really are gratified by helping others. It's, it's a real thing. I mean, yeah. there, there is a joy to paying it forward. There really yeah. is. So... A lot of people feel like they don't know what the call to adventure is. Some people have very clear drives, aspirations, desires to be. We, we meet a lot of uh, fans who want to be voiceover talents themselves or, or they're cartoonists. We met the professional animator uh, when we were in Australia, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun. And she's working on a project that our listeners will recognize, but I'm not allowed to tell them what it is. But anyway, oh, shh. <laughs> shh, don't say You'd anything. be forced to, to kill them all. I yes. would. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a, yeah, potentially a lot more work than I'm willing to do. Right. Um, but there are, you know, the, the other side of that coin is people who feel like they just don't know what that is. And I think for you know, people like you and I, you, you know, it, it was not that hard to see. Right. Right. But for people who feel they don't know, I would suggest that maybe it's that thing that you think is out of reach. A lot of people think of their lives in a very conventional way. I'm going to be informed about what I do with my life based on the generic idea of what my environment is telling me I should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. And that's probably not a very inspirational thing to consider. Mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm going to be a very normal person. Well, you know, what's normal? To begin with, but also thinking conventionally, I'm not saying that it's it's certainly a bad thing, but if you're feeling like you're missing something, maybe it's because you're not looking far enough, thinking big enough, right? Right. And that's not a audacious or egocentric or arrogant thing to do to say, maybe I should think in bigger terms. Setting goals and, and actually, and they don't have to be the moon on the first shot, but right. you can definitely set goals and say, I want to do that. I'm going to try to do that. Right, right. And there's something, one of your um, phrases that I, I really uh, like, it's a very useful um, tool, is um, that phrase, you, you never want to be in a position where you say, but what if I did? Or what is it? I love it so much, I can, I can only paraphrase it. To me, the worst two words that you could ask yourself or say to yourself are, what if? Right. I never want to be in a position where I say, what if I had tried that? Because to me, success is the journey. It's not the pot of gold. It's getting up and trying it. Now, there are definitely things that one would be better at than others, but you don't know unless you try. And to say, what if? At the end of your your journey, uh, to me, that's the failure side. Right. And that's something that I'd never want to say to myself. Right. What you're talking about is this other part of this, uh, you know, what is your call? Right. Um, there's a lost art to me of being an apprentice. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I didn't know what was out there until I sat in and experienced what the many different things about this career that there are, the jobs, the roles people have, the engineer, the editor, the producer, the director, the, you know, whatever it was. 
I just think that if you wanted to be the best carpenter in town, you'd find the best carpenter in town and say, I'll clean up your shop and I'll put your tools away at the end of the day if you just let me shadow you. Right. Because it's something I'm interested in, but I don't know if it's exactly what I'm interested in. <laughs> right. And, right. Right. And you'll learn so much and you'll end up doing some of the projects with them or maybe even taking over some of the projects for them. Mm -hmm. But if you have an interest in something, and you're like, I like cartoons, or I like music, or I, whatever it is, find a way to get an internship. Uh, because too many people are interested in, I want to get paid, okay? I need a job. Okay, get your job. But if you've got a couple of hours a week, find out if there's a recording studio in town that you can intern in. Find out if there's a advertising company where they're doing layouts for ads and print ads because right, you want to see right, graphics. Right. And you say, I have three or four hours. Can I just help? And it's not, right. can I just take out the garbage? It's, right. I'll take out the garbage if, in return, you let me sit in and watch the graphic artist do the ad layout. Right, right. That is an application to the real-world expression of what your ambitions are. Mm -hmm. That is so important, I think, for people to understand. You know, there's this phrase, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's kind of true, but I think it's also very misleading. Because you need to work hard. Mm -hmm. To do anything that is satisfying or gratifying, you need to put yourself in that place where you're exerting, you know, it's the inspiration and perspiration, right? If you find that path, if you answer the call, that doesn't mean that everything's going going to be easy. Not at all. Right. And if you're doing something that's easy for you, you're probably not challenging yourself. But I think that you never work a day in your life. Sentiment comes from, but you're motivated to get through whatever obstacles you may encounter. And it is gratifying when you get to that goal. Well, to use the word work like that as if it's some bad word, it's not. I love work. I love work. Yeah. It's not a bad word. I mean, yeah. I know people that we work so hard at the prep for their career that they don't enjoy the career. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a balance. There is a balance. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, but yes, work is not a, is not a, a bad word. A four-letter word, no, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> and also, I think, too, when you're challenging yourself in ways that you can see that you're improving. Like you just said, it's not the pot of gold, it's the rainbow. Seeing yourself improve is a very positive experience, a very reinforcing experience, right? Mm -hmm. And you are letting go to that version of yourself that you used to be because now you can do these other things better. And that, of course, demands you to keep, well, if you can improve in this way, you know, it's, it's like cleaning your house. Well, now the living room's <laughs> clean. Now i got to clean up everything else. It's like, well, if I know I can improve, i got to keep applying myself. Oh, great. Now you're reminding else... me of what I've got to do after this podcast. <laughs> well, your dog actually <laughs> called me earlier and said, hey, he really needs to clean up. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, it, and, it, and you mentioned the, the improvement thing, too. It's like, well, there are days that I work on something and I think this is great. And I revisit it the next day and I go, this is trash. This is garbage. What am I doing? Right? Sure. And then it's normal. going back to the to the live performance side and the audience response and, and sort of the experience of testing your work. Um, right. You know, you right. could you could do great material that sits on your shelf all day long, whatever it may be. I mean, I'm just I'm talking in a literal sense. And if no one ever experiences it, you might not know if it's good or not if you don't put it out right. there, right? Right. So so right. one of the things we have here in Nashville is like songwriter nights where we we basically sit around, you know, three or four artists on stage together and we try out new material. Um, for, uh -huh. in front of a live audience. And there are right. days where I'm like, you know, I just wrote this song and you play it and you think to yourself, oh, this is that trash song that I wrote the other day and it's going to go. <laughs> and then people are like, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. That's such a great, and you're like, oh, okay. Maybe I'm being a little hard on myself. That's actually right. a good song because people are enjoying it. So sometimes the fear makes us think, oh, everything I'm doing is not worthy of putting it out there. Right. But you won't know if you don't try, and then you're living that what if life. Right. You have to put it out there to see maybe someone in the business or someone in the audience is going to say, you know what? This is really good. I want to work with you. Yeah. Well said. And, and um, let's let's bring this conversation to a close mm -hmm. for now. I'm sure we'll come back to the subject matter. Sure. Uh, but uh, and for, for my parting thought on this topic for today. When you answer that call, when you figure out what that call is and you go forward with it, you are going to have frustrations. You are going to have challenges. And when it's creative and you're putting yourself out there, it's going to be frustrating and demoralizing if you want to draw and you're not drawing well enough. You know, I'm trying to get this done and I'm failing at it. And that's a normal part of the process. But throughout all of it, always be on your side. Mm -hmm. You will do yourself no favors beating yourself up. 
And that's so tempting to do. I'm not saying, you know, believe that everything you do is wonderful. Not at all. But don't get into the I suck, I shouldn't be, I can't, I'm a bad person conversation. Because one, that isn't true. And two, it's not going to get you anywhere. That's a, something I really reinforce with my students. Always be on your own side because those frustrations are going to come. And those aren't proof that you aren't good. It's, it, it's proof that you're working, mm -hmm. right? And that you're trying to get to the next level. That's great. I think those are great yeah. closing thoughts right there. I can't top that, my friend. I will next week, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, that's your challenge. Okay, well, that's a, good, that's that's a healthy right. competition. <laughs> good healthy stuff. Competition. Yep, great. All right, well, good as always to talk to you, Eric. Yes, and, you too. Um, Thanks for listening to Heart of the Cards, and we look forward to our next conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Adromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.